first numerical problem based on uh, QED, which is slightly different from the, the problem which has solved the other day. Okay. So you take first one. Yeah. 25 cm cube of 25 cm cube of an industrial accumulator. 25 cm cube of That is 25 cm cube is what? 25 cm. 25 cm cube of an industrial effluent consume consume 5 cm cube of consume 5 cm cube of 0 0.5 n 0 0.5 n K2 TR2 O7 consume 5 cm cube of 0 0.5 m k 2 cr 7 solution for oxidation. For oxidation. Calculate QD of the sum. Calculate QD of the sum. Now what is given here is last uh, numerical problem which I have solved. There Directly you can use QD formula that is QD is equal to what? That is volume of the sample required for the blank titration minus volume of the sample required for back titration into normality of ferrosomium sulfate into 8 into 1000 thereby volume of the sample used for under. There it is a direct numerical problem where from volume of the ferrosomium sulfate consumed for back titration and blank titration you can find out QD of the sample. But now here, they have not given FAS, ferrosomium sulfate concentration as well as volume consumed for the back and blank titration. What is given here, 25 cm cube of an industrial effluent requires 0.5, that is 5 cm cube of 0.5 L, CTCR27 for complete oxidation. Means all what they have given here, that CTCR27, which is used as a strong oxidizing agent, amount of CTCR27 consumed for oxidation. So, this is an indirect problem. And you have to solve, find out for chemical oxygen. Now, we are familiar with this equation that 1000 cc of 1000 cm cube well, right? Because cm cube means 50 cm cube. 1000 cm cm of 1 m 2 cr to 7 is equal to what? 49 grams of 2 cr to 0 7. Now how this equation means we have to dissolve 49 grams of KTCR27 that is the equivalent rate of KTCR27. If we dissolve it in 1 liter, what it is? 1000 cm cube of 1 normal KTCR27 is equivalent to 49 grams of KTCR27. Now 49 here, equivalent rate of KTCR27. So if we dissolve 49 grams of KTCR27 in 1 liter of water or you can call it as 1000 cm cube, same thing. Okay. So it is equivalent to 49 grams of KTCR. Then 5 cm cube of 5 cm cube of 0 0.5 n KTCR2 okay. so is equivalent to what? Okay, now you got 5 cm cube of 0.5 n KTCR27 used for pure analysis and that is the volume of the KTCR27 consumed. So how to find out this? Uh, Value. So 0 0.5, 5 cm cube of 0 0.5 n kt square to 7 requires here 5 into, I will write this here, 0 0.5 into 49 divided by 1000 grams of kt square to 1000. Okay, calculate that and see what you get here. Point one two three one two is enough. Okay. Grams of two two three Now you are familiar with this uh, equation where two two three two seven acts as a strong oxidizing agent. I am going to write that equation. Two two three two seven plus four H two so four. It gives what two two. So four plus 
What is next? K2SO4, Kr2SO4 prime. 4H2O plus 3 oxygen. Here, then K2Cr27 acts as a strong oxidizing agent. So, one mole of K2Cr27 gives 3 moles of oxygen. Here, one mole of K2Cr27, 4H2O, 3 moles of oxygen. So, right here, 1 mole of K2Cr27 gives or equivalent to 3 moles of oxygen. One mole of K2Cr27 is gives 3 moles of oxygen. The question is balanced or not? Correct? No? Yeah. So now, 1 mole of K2Cr27 gives 3 moles of oxygen. Okay. Then 1 mole of K2Cr2 means 294 grams. Molecular weight. Grams of K2Cr27 is equivalent to 3 moles of oxygen is how much? 48 grams. 16 into 3. 48 grams of oxygen. Now, you know, 294 grams of ketocyanate to 7 is equivalent to 48 grams of oxygen. Now, how is that 48? 3 moles of oxygen, 16 into 6. Clear. So then, whatever you have got here, 0 0.12 grams of ketocyanate to 7 is equivalent to what? 0 0.12 into 48 divided by 294. Grams of what now? Oxygen. Means you are calculating amount of oxygen required to oxidize organic matter. That is your. So what do you get here? Point? Point zero one nine. 0.019 grams of oxygen. Now you've got 0 0.019 grams of oxygen required to oxidize both 25 km cube of sample. Because what the numerical problem says, 25 km cube of industrial effluent requires 5 km cube of 0.5 and 2 to 7. Find out COD of the sample. Means we are find, trying to find out amount of oxygen required for one liter sample. Now this is 25 cm cube requires this much. COD is always expressed in milligrams per liter. So then you write here COD of the sample. Directly I am going to write 0 0.019. They got here. Now this is for 25 cc. This is for 25 cc. For per liter, 1000 by 25. Now you'll get what? COD of the sample in grams per liter. But you have to multiply it by again 1000 to convert it to milligrams per liter. So again, multiply it by 1000. You'll get COD of the sample in milligrams per liter. So what's the Seven, seven, seven sixty. Correct. See, if you are taking here point one two two, I have taken point one two two. You get here point zero two, almost. And when you take here point zero two here. You get 800 milligrams per liter. That's not I say. Okay, so after what is it you have taken? 
here. Calculate that 0 0.0122. I have taken 0 0.01. 0.1225 and if I take here 0.12225 I get 0 0.0 and 0 0.02 into 1000 by 25 800 milligrams per day. Correct? Check it. That's how this numerical problem is solved. What is done here? What they have given only volume of KT charge, KT charge is given required for 25 PM cube of index given. That is the amount of KT charge to 7 required to oxidize organic matter present in index given. They have not given FAS concentration or But volume of KT uh, sample is given 24. So we have to calculate amount of oxygen required to oxidize 25 PM cube of index effluent by using this test. And once you get this is the amount of oxygen required in gram for 25 cc of industrial effluent. So calculate for 1 liter to 1000 by 25 grams per liter. Again multiplied by 1000 because here is purely always you have to express in milligrams per liter. Again multiplied by 1000 to get for 800 milligrams per liter. Example. Now the next one slightly different but they have asked what the organic matter, how much quantity is present, almost steps are similar. But one more step is, one more question will added to that. Take it. 25 cm cube of, 25 cm cube of an industrial effluent, 25 cm cube of an industrial effluent required, 25 cm cube is of that right, 25 cc now. You should know. 25 cc of an industrial effluent required, 12.5 cc of 12.5 cc of 0.5 n KTCR to acid. 12.5 cc of 0.5 n KTCR to O7. Calculate. Calculate theory of the sample. Calculate theory of the sample. Calculate theory of the sample. Assuming that, assuming that the effluent contains, assuming that the effluent contains oxalic acid, only oxalic acid. Assuming that the effluent contains only oxalic acid. Calculate the amount of oxalic acid present per liter. Assuming that effluent contains only oxalic acid, calculate the amount of oxalic acid present per liter. Calculate the amount of oxalic acid present per liter. The equivalent weight of oxalic acid is the equivalent weight of oxalic acid is. 63. The equivalent weight of oxalic acid is 63. Now what is change here? Instead of volume is 10, 25 cc, volume of K2C 7 required is 12.5. So where we have to write here, instead of 5 cm cube, 12.5. Concentration is same, 0.5. Correct? No change here. I want to make it 12.5. What is it here? Yes, grams of particular picture. There were thousand, sorry, not hundred. There are thousand only, I am a numerical problem also. There were thousand. I think we will get around point two zero six two five into ten to six. Huh? Point six two five. What is this? Point three zero six two five grams. Now, 
1 mole of KCO2 to 7, same thing 3 moles of oxygen, 294 grams of KCO2 to 7 is equal to 48 grams of oxygen, then point 30665. That is grams of KCO2 So, substitute here, it's a point 0.12. 0 0.30625 into 48 divided by 2 94. So what is it here? Point 0 0.05. Good. Check it. Point 0 0.05. Point 0 0.05 grams of oxygen. Okay. Then theory of the sample. 0.05 into 1000 by 25 into 1000. Correct? So what is it here? 2000 milligram. Okay. Now this is the answer. Purely 2000 milligrams per liter is what? The amount of organic matter which is present is what? Are there analysis? So you got the theory as. 800 milligrams per liter. Now, COD 1000 milligrams per liter means what actually what is really chemical oxygen demand, quantity of oxygen required to oxidize organic matter using strong oxidizing agent. So, now COD value is high indicates what organic matter present is more. Okay, so COD of the sample 0.05 grams per liter milligrams per liter multiplied again by 1000 milligrams per liter. Now, what they have told the effluent contains. Oxalic acid. So right here, H2CO4, oxalic acid. If it contains only oxalic acid, so then H2H2O2 half O2 oil, right? It gives what? H2O plus CCO. Means if the effluent contains oxalic acid, it gets oxidized to what? Water and carbon. Clear. So, you can say this is half water means what? 8 grams. Oxalic acid is 63. It uh, means 8 grams of oxygen required for 63 grams of oxygen acid. Or you can write 8 grams of oxygen required for 63 grams of oxygen acid for oxygen. Then, so what is written here? 8 grams of oxygen you got here. Instead of milligrams, I write here. 2 grams of oxygen oxidizes 2 into 63 divided by 8. They are asked how much oxalic acid is present. So, 8 grams of oxygen is required to oxidize 63 grams of oxalic acid. Then 2 grams of oxygen oxidizes how much oxalic acid. So, how much is it? Oxalic How much it is? 15.7. 15.7 grams per liter. That is, quantity of oxalic acid present in the sample. Means what? If 15.7 grams of oxalic acid is present in 1 liter, you will get COD as 2000. Is that clear? Now, what I have done, calculated amount of oxalic acid present in the ethylene because the mentioned clearly the ethylene contains oxalic acid. So, it gets oxidized to what? Water and carbon dioxide. So, 8 grams of oxygen required to oxidize 60 grams of oxalic acid. Then, 2 grams of oxygen because here your theory is 2 grams per liter instead of milligrams as well. Written here, 2 grams of oxygen. Okay. So, what is it? So, 15.7 grams of oxalic acid is present in sample so that its pure value is 2000 milligrams.
Yeah. That's how this will get the problem. So this is one, one more step. They may ask, they will give you oxalic acid or some other thing. So you have to see that how it gets oxalic. Okay, so I'm finally find it. But maximum acid there for the calculation of QD and this includes one, one or two months. Okay, now the third problem is slightly different. Write it. 25 cm cube of 25 cm cube of an industrial effluent 25 cm cube of an effluent sample 25 cm cube of an effluent sample required 8.3 cm cube of 25 cm cube of industrial sample requires 8.3 cm cube of 8.3 cm cube of 0 0.001 molar coefficient 0 0.001 molar coefficient 0.001 molar coefficient. Calculate, calculate the theory of the effluent sample. Calculate the theory of the effluent sample. Now what is given here, instead of molarity, normality, molarity of the KTC So what is the difference here? Instead of normality of KTC assessment, what is given here? 25 cm cube of an industrial effluent requires 8.3 cm cube of 0 0.001 molar KTC assessment. So the equation will change now. So 1000 cc of, right here, 1000 cm cube of 1 molar, instead of normal, Right there, 1 molar KTCR to 7 is equal to what? 1 molar KTCR to 7 is actually 294 grams. 1000 cm cube of 1 molar KTCR to 7 is equal to 294 grams of KTCR to 7. Then, what's the volume? 8 .3 cm cube of 0 0.001 molar. Eight point three cm cube of zero point zero zero one molar. So I'll write here eight point three cm cube of zero point zero zero one molar two ninety four get back out. <coughs> so how much is it here? That is 2.44 into 10 raised to minus 3 grams of petrol. Grams of petrol. Now equation is again same. K2 to 7, 4 SP so forth. If you want, you can write it directly. Otherwise, 1 mole of K2 to 7 is equal to 3 moles of oxygen. So 294 grams of K2CR to 7 is equal to 48 grams of oxygen. Then 2.44 into 10 raised to minus 3 grams of K2CR to 7. Right here. 2.44 into 10 raised to minus 3 into 48 dead by 294. So you get here 3.9 into 10 raised to minus 4. Correct this? Check it. 3.98 into 10 raised to minus 4 grams. So, 
2.98 into 10 raised to minus 4 into 1000 by 25 grams per liter. 25 cm cube of sample multiplied by 1000. What's the answer you get? Huh? 15 points? Nice. Now it is very less to add. 15.92 milligrams per liter of oxygen. That is theory of the so it out here, what is changed there? First equation, 1000 cc of one normal keto to 7 is equivalent to 49 grams of keto to 7. One gram equivalent. Here, one mole of substance, 1000 cc of one molar keto to 7 is equivalent to 94 grams of keto to 7. Only that's the thing. Then, 8.2 cm cube of 0 0.001 molar keto to 7. So, convert all in moles here. So finally, we get theory of the sample in they are again 15.90 milligram per liter. Means yield is less in the case what organic matter present is very less. Now most of the time you will find when industrial effluents are checked. For example, dairy waste. The waste from dairy industry. Purity value is very high. Because organic matter, oxidizable matter is more present in dairy waste. Whereas if you consider industrial waste from pharmaceutical industries or you can say chemical industries, this organic matter is present again purity high. Purity is very high. So it depends on what oxidizable inert organic matter present in fluid. Higher is the organic matter present, higher is the fluid. Clear. So always two tests are conducted, BOD and QD. It is not only QD is conducted. Along with that, BOD is also tested because to check quantity of oxygen required to oxidize organic matter present biologically in a period of five days. So always two tests are conducted, but always you'll find QD is greater than QD. QOD, we are using strong oxidizing agent to oxidize all the ma organic matter present in a QOD. Okay. Last simple problem. This is again different. Yeah. Okay. In a BOD test, BOD it is. In a BOD test, one dm cube of waste water. In BOD test, one dm cube in BOD test, one dm cube of waste water from sugar industry, one dm cube of waste water from sugar industry One dm cube of waste water from sugar industry containing containing 200 milligrams of glucose. 200 milligrams of glucose containing 200 milligrams of glucose was completely oxidized. Was completely oxidized into CO2 and H2O was completely oxidized into CO2 and H2O. Calculate BOD of the best water sample. Calculate BOD of the best water sample. Q is equal to 12. X is equal to 1. O is equal to So what is given here? Industrial effluent from sugar industry which contains 200 milligrams of glucose. Okay. And then from that you have to find out 1 dm cube of that sample. 1 dm cube means what? 1 liter. Okay. 1 liter of sample contains this much quantity of glucose. Okay. Find out your of this one. Now here no d1 is given, no d2 is given. Or we don't have to calculate d1 and d2. Yes, yeah. so this is slightly different problem. So, write first equation that is glucose is 36, H12, O6. Of 
Okay, so I'll write here six O2 oxygen because we have to calculate oxygen. It gives what? Six CO2, six carbon atoms, and six H2O. Okay, please. Glucose, when it is present in uh, uh, industrial waste from sugar industry, and if it is used for, if it is present, then see the analysis. What happens? Glucose gets oxidized to carbon dioxide and water. The amount of oxygen required is six or two, six times oxygen. Okay. So now calculate glucose with molecular mass. See six means six into twelve. That is seventy-two. H12, that is 12 into 1, 12. And then O6, 16 into 6, 96. So you get what? 1, 6. Okay. Now 6 O2, that is 6 O2 means 12. 6 O2, 6 times. 16, correct? That is 6 into 2 into 16. Correct? 6 or 2, 12 into 16. That is 192. Huh? 192. Now, 180 grams of glucose requires what? Now, what is the amount of glucose present? It is given 200 grams. Okay, I'll write here 180 into 10 raised to 3. I have converted grams to milligrams now. Milligrams of glucose requires 192 into 10 raised to 3 milligrams of oxygen. Milligrams of oxygen. Then, 200 milligrams of glucose. Because quantity of glucose present is 200 milligrams. So, amount of oxygen required 200 into 192 into 10 raised to 3, by 180 10 to 3. Huh? 213.3. That is amount of oxygen required for DMT. Instead of milligrams per liter, I have written that milligrams per DMT. Now, this is how we can calculate amount of oxygen required to oxidize if there is. 200 milligrams of glucose present in a effluent tank. Now, last problem you solve it at home. Similar problem. Calculate, calculate beauty of water sample. Calculate beauty of water sample having the organic compound. Calculate beauty of the water sample having the organic compound with the formula CHCO. Calculate the BOD of the water sample having the organic compound with formula CSCO. CSCO 9.6 milligrams per day. Having CSCO 9.6 milligrams per DMT. Having containing or having CSCO 9.6 milligrams per DMT. Now what is there? CSO means what? Formal dead. SPSO. It is then CSO. And oxygen. It will be what? Water and carbon. Clear. CSO plus O2 here. Not 6 O2. CSO plus O2. It will be what? H2O plus Q. So substitute all that and calculate amount of uh, you can say what is the beauty of the sample. Same thing. Instead of glucose here, 
H2O plus O2, it gives what? H2O plus H2O. Is that clear? Then that's it. Find out from um, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, everything. And then from that, you can find out DOD of the carbon. So that's all about this DOD, COD numerical problems, which are very important. Either you'll get one problem from DOD or one from COD. That is for sure. So that's all about this first, uh, you can say whatever numerical problems based on DOD and COD and then I'll discuss what is dissolved oxygen, how it is analyzed by nuclear modified assembly. Okay. Now the next part of this chapter is sewage technique. Now you are familiar with this uh, sewage treatment. I think sewage treatment, what is very important here, that is analysis of DOD of the sample as well as COD of the sample. Because whenever sewage treatment is done, before sewage is treated, you have to check the sample for chemical oxygen demand, you have to check the sample for DOD also. But DOD required side is, but you have to check it. So these three parameters are checked before further treatment is done. Why they have included beauty and beauty first is because any sewage treatment plant, sewage is a domestic waste or industrial waste which is generated and which contains what? Organic matter present in that, suspended matter present in that, visual organic matter present in that, then you can say uh, also it contains uh, organometallic compounds, it also contains paper, plastic waste, everything. Yeah. So, sewage is a complex, we can say, it's generated from, you can say, residential areas, that whatever fever line, whatever residential area is there, there we call it as gutters and all. Whereas fever line, in correct word is fever line, then when industrial waste, domestic waste gets mixed together, finally you have to treat that sewage. So why it is required? Because finally, if you don't treat sewage which is generated, for example, if city like Belgium, the uh, population is around 6 lakh. If each and every person consumes around 100 liters of water, because per person for consumption of water, as per the international standard, it is around 75 to 150 liters. It depends on what? What are the facilities which you have got? Okay. So, in the sense, some people consume more water, some people consume less water. But on an average, you can consider it as the 75 to 100 liters of water is consumed for drinking, bathing, cooking, etc. Water. Okay. So 100 into 5 lakhs, 100 into 5 lakhs, that much quantity of sewage is generated every year from just domestic sewage. We call it as a domestic sewage. Sewage generated from residential areas, sewage generated from colonies, sewage generated from city corporation, because that's the water quantity of water is consumed. And finally, industrial waste. Now, industry also consumes water for retention their processes, for cleaning purpose, etc. For example, chemical industry consumes more water because we use water as a solvent, they use water for generating food. So, a lot of water is required. Pharmaceutical industry, they also consume huge quantity of water because they require water of zero hardness, best quality water. So, whatever raw water is available, process is done and they get crystal clear water, use it for their process. But after processing, finally, rest is generated. Yeah. So, whatever waste generated from you can say corporation, city corporation limit, as well as waste generated from industrial area, and it gets mixed together, then you can call it as a sewage. If it is separate, you can call it as a domestic sewage and industrial sewage. Clear. So it depends on what? Type of industry, but domestic sewage, most of the places you find it is almost similar. Clear. The problem with the present cities in India, they don't have any sewage treatment plant. Even in Belgium also, they are planning sewage treatment plant for 15 years. Last 15 years they are planning for sewage treatment plant. There is no sewage treatment. They have not decided. They have decided to place now near uh, Alarbar, Alarbar, Alarbar something. And farmers are against it because they don't want that sewage treatment plant located there. But the problem what we are facing is all rivers and lakes which are water bodies, where they are present, they are getting polluted because of sewage. So that is getting contaminated because of the sewage 
and also groundwater also getting contaminated with. Now you will not find any well, open well, in corporation limits where the water is not contaminated with the city. Because if it, there are no proper sewer lines, water gets percolated through the soil and finally you will find it reaches a well, open well or you can say bore well also. Sometimes we are in newspapers also in Bangalore, places like Kenya. So that water which was pumped from bore well, its color was yellow. That orange is almost yellow to orange color. So what is the reason you know? That Kenya industry we have, there are so many electroplating industries are located, so many plants. And they what they did, you know, to see these uh, people that so was so that one borewell they used to pump water, other borewell there was no water, there was no water available. What they did, whatever water available from the um, borewell where the water is source is there, used it for electroplating, and the borewell where there is no water, so they pump it into that. See what it what I'm telling. The borewell where water is available used it for industrial purposes and then borewell where there is no water that we can say so they force that water after treatment to the adjacent borewell. Now the entire groundwater in that area, Penya, got finished. And people started drinking water and you know chromium is hazardous and chromium is highly toxic and some people are suffering there. Those who are staying in that area are using borewell water for drinking purpose in this they don't know. Poor people, they don't know from where the borable water is contaminated. Now, government has given notifications to the, all the industries which are located and they have to follow 100% compliance resource. No effluent generated from the electroplatic industry is just discharged. You have to treat it 100% and then only. I'm giving you just one example Kenya industry area. It was there in the newspaper almost three, four years back. Now, I don't know the present situation, what is there, or it is there. The problem is with the most of the cities in India, all the rivers are getting polluted to a maximum extent. Earlier there was a river in the one place in Indore, as you said. It was a river earlier, now it has become Nala. So, same situation is there in few places in most of the cities. Clear. So, because that's why that river, but our river, state river, that that was the reason because most of the rivers are getting contaminated. contaminated. We find one incident I'm going to tell you why this river pollution all started. Ganga pollution all started. So one advocate was just walking around on uh, the uh, Yamuna River bridge and he, he found that some part of the river it, uh, there is a fire. That river water got contaminated with oil and that some, someone threw this thing, matchbox stick or something happened there and that entire river some stack was under fire. Then he was surprised. He said how it has happened. It is because of contamination of river with we can say oil or some uh, flammable substances and he saw that it is because of that. And then what he did, he filed a case against uh, that person and then there was a pressure on the government and then they started thinking of this Yamuna and Ganga River action plan. But for your information, Ganga River cleaning and Yamuna River cleaning, they have spent more than 20,000 crores, but there is no issue. Yeah, earlier government has spent nearly 20,000 crores for cleaning. Now you just think about it, where that money is gone. Yeah, cleaning Ganga is not that easy for information. Ganga, it uh, originates from Mangotri. Up to Haridwar, there is no damage at all. It is free flowing river. No contamination, no industry level. From Gangotri to Haridwar. But once it crosses Haridwar, gone. So it is, we say Ganga is dead. It's because of all the industries surrounding once it crosses the Haridwar. All industries, municipalities, corporations located very close to the river basin and you'll find everything goes into the without any proof. Without any proof. That's the problem. Unless the COD and BOD norms are fixed in India, like any industry generates effluent, if they bring BOD down to 10 mg per liter, COD down to 25 mg per liter, then only you can reduce pollution of the river, pollution of the groundwater, pollution of the mist, whatever water resources you have. Now, unless norms are strong, nothing is possible. So only in, I'm discussing this 
So municipalities, corporations, they know these are the standards, but there are no strict norms where, so if you discharge to a effluent of the concentration more than 50 mg COD per liter or BOD, you are not allowed to discharge. Such strong, stringent norms are required, then only you can reduce water pollution. So I've just given you a brief idea about the water pollution, why it is important. Now, the waste treatment, there are three steps. First one is primary treatment. Three steps are involved. Not the simple steps on paper, it's very on blackboard, it is very easy to explain all these processes. But if you go and see the waste treatment plant, that's very complex. So you require to check each and every parameter. We have to see that everything is working very fine. Then only you get an excellent after treatment. See from all the impurities present. Absolutely, organic matter is present, suspended matter is present, floating matter is present. Then in addition that, you can say uh, organometric compounds are present, solvents are present, pesticides, what not. Everything is present. So, how to treat it? If you don't have any choice, you require primary treatment. So, now primary treatment is uh, sometimes called preliminary treatment. Step to see that whatever possible remove in the beginning. Okay, you can't remove organic matter by primary treatment process. No, you can't remove dissolved organic matter present in civet by primary treatment. You require secondary treatment. So now, tertiary treatment means what? Fine tuning. You have removed some portion, some impurities present by primary and secondary process. Now you are interested to see that the civet which is treated after tertiary treatment, it is crystal clear water. Which after tertiary treatment, it is as good as crystal clear water which you can use it for drinking purposes. Now that's possible. Now Israel is the only country in the world. Only country in the world, so they recycle each and every drop of sewage. They have got the technology and they are very good in irrigation, etc. Israel is the only country in the world. If you go to Israel, this experience told by some person. To visit Israel. He said, you will get a glass of water in hot tea, but we are not sure whether it is your fresh water you are getting or it is sewage treated water you are drinking. But guarantee is there that treated water is free from all the impurities. So each and every glass of water which is supplied, you can say in Israel, it is recycled. So everything is recycled because they know they don't have sufficient huge quantity of fresh water. So they have to either desalinate sea water for drinking purpose or recycle the water which is used for different purposes. So it's the only country in the world that say they recycle each and every drop and they know how to use a drop of water. That's why they are very smart, you can say, in irrigation. All irrigation technologies which are available throughout the world, it is free Israel. Don't think that it is some other country. They are very smart. How to irrigate a single plant or you can say how much water is required how much daily water is required, how many days you require so much of water, and then finally what they will use it. So much calculation. So the water that we have, now I told you I think once, so if you want to judge a country, whether it is developed country or underdeveloping country, it is based on the quality of water which is supplied to the community, or you can say person or who, who is residents of that country, and second one, currency. I told you once, no. Currency, not in use, if you are using credit cards, if you are using money transfer digitally, then currency is less in circulation. When it is less in circulation, it is not soil. If it is not soil currency, indicates what? Your development. Water quality, if every person residing in rural area, urban area, if you get a clear crystal, clear water, fit for drinking purpose, we can say it is development. So two parameters only. One is currency, how circulation, minimum currency in circulation. Second, good quality of water.
So if these two parameters are there, good quality of water, how you get? Treatment is required everywhere, no pollution caused to rivers and water bodies. So you get very good quality of water because of this reason. There is a reason because they have got treatment plants, they have got proper saver lines, they have got proper treatment plants for cartridge, pretty cartridge, to this industrial effluent, and then no mixing, etc. And you get clear water. So getting a clear, crystal clear water without any contaminants, very difficult. So only we are lucky in Belgium to see we get water from Rakhastok or Hirkal Dam, we get good quality of water. But only possible is that it gets contaminated because of the over irrigation. Irrigation like use of excessive fertilization, pesticides. Whatever runoff, runoff water means what? Whatever water reaches from the earth, that is from, you can say, any season, that water reaches the land or soil surface. Some of it percolates, but whatever excess water is there, it just simply flows off. And that flows of flowing water finally reaches what? River and water. Or you can say, your dam surface. So, there is a possibility that the drinking water which we are using it is contaminated with pesticides. But because of dilution, quantity is huge. So because of dilution, you don't feel it is contaminated. Clear, but it is better. So, if you check the quality of water, very calm, city, very heavy, whatever water you get, it is best in this part. Test wise, as well as clarity wise. If you visit some other place, then only we know Kulbarga or you can say, some other place you'll find what's the quality of water. The difference is there. In iron ore, they've got desalination plant, huge desalination plant for domestic use water. Because huge quantity of water is required, Chennai is growing. And it is in, in India, biggest desalination plant, converting sea water to a we can say potable water is only in Chennai. So next class I'm discuss how this sewage treatment is done.